Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. We have some great research that we're going to showcase coming up here for our College Roadshow. But first, we're going to showcase some of this ag econ knowledge here at the university. We have Brad Lubin, Jeff Peterson, as well as Doug Simon joining us to break down the markets. And there's a lot of frustration out there, but we have seen some life in the markets lately. But Jeff, let's first talk about this heat. I mean, we have seen the heat come in. We've seen some dry pockets really start to show up here in August. Do you think this soybean crop is getting smaller? Yeah, I think overall the, the crop is getting smaller. You know, the Pro Farmer Tour showed that we had a really good potential. Pod counts are really high, and it looks like that crop had a lot of potential. Part of the challenge we've had, though, is we've had these warmer and drier conditions. The thing I'd caution everybody on, though, is that just because this crop is getting smaller doesn't necessarily mean it's getting smaller below USDA's numbers. So if we think about that 53.2 yield, I still think we probably could see a chance to see it a little bit higher than that number yet, but even though the crop is probably backing up a little bit time. Yeah, and we're going to get an updated look at that from USDA next week, their first field-based survey that they will release in the September WASDE. But Doug, there is some early harvest happening in, in, in some areas. What are you hearing as far as reports go? Well, the early ones that got started, I've heard they planted early and they got it in before it was wet. And so they should have pretty good yields. They're not really talking a lot about the yields. And there's other areas like we were talking before the show that are dry and have started to chop or have started to harvest because they have dried down. But you use a good description. Pockets are moisture. There have been areas where we've had decent rains mm -hmm. further out west. Actually, they're dry land. Non-irrigated yields are probably going to be a little better than they thought two weeks ago. But I would say in the eastern part of the state here, probably down from where we were six weeks ago. I think we had really big opportunity or big potential, but we've lost that with the drier weather. I mean, how much do you think percentage wise? How much has we taken off possibly? I mean, I know the verdict, it'll take a while to, to figure this out, but if you had to guess right now. In Cass County, we're probably looking at 250, you know, dry land yields uh -huh. in areas, and they're probably back more toward APH, maybe 200, 210. Okay, okay. so a, a, a considerable hit. Correct, yes. Well, Brad, you go just south of here in areas of Kansas. I mean, it's it, it, it's ugly as far mm -hmm. as the drought picture goes. And when you look at some of this disaster aid, in the past, we've seen Congress be able to pass some of this ad hoc. Do you expect Congress to be able to come to terms to be able to get some of this drought assistance to producers across the country that may need it this year? Right. I, I think we, we continually see pressure for drought assistance. Recognize that in the Farm Bill language itself, we have permanent standing authority for assistance on the livestock side, but not the crop side. It's always a debate in Congress. It's always a challenge to say how much assistance might be available if we have some dry pockets. When the overall uh, ag economy is struggling a bit as it is, uh, when certain pockets are struggling with production conditions, there's more of a political push to get assistance, but it's still a fight and it's still difficult to imagine when that would get done. No matter the outcome of the election in November, do you think it's still going to be a battle? I, it's still a battle unless one party gains control of everything in D.C. and can push through a mandate. We're still living with the typical mixed uh, mixed party control and, and mixed consensus on what we can get done. Jeff, as farmers start to get in the field and they're weighing right now, what do I do? Are we going to see more farmers store the grain this fall and what potentially will that do to basis? Yeah, so a couple things there. I think uh, overall coming in here, unfortunately, I'd say the farmers are undersold. They just didn't see the opportunity to make the sale. So as they bring these bushels into town, they're gonna do everything they can to go ahead and keep from selling. So they're gonna try to put stuff on storage or delayed pricing. They're gonna try to use some you know, uh, bags out in the fields to try to go ahead and hold that crop. And overall, I think the commercial grain buyers are gonna have to really work hard to get ownership. So I think we're gonna see some improvement in basis as we go forward here. Now at a certain point, we gotta think about the Eastern Corn Belt. That could be hurt a little bit because of some of the things that are going on on the Mississippi River. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that too. So as farmers, Doug, then weigh their options right now. Last year, for those that didn't sell off the combine, I think they wish they would have. What is? What do you think is the best move for farmers this fall? The other thing you have to look at is the carry in the market. We had big carries last year. That uh, D's to March corn carry was 25 cents, which was a record. Now we're out in that 18 to 19 cents, which was about the same as what there's only been one other time we were that large. So there are some big carries in both the corn and the beans. But the other thing you have to weigh that against is eight, nine, 10% operating notes. If you're gonna store that, are you gonna get the return if you could have just sold that you know, off the combine? Where we look at trying to hedge you know, ahead of time doing pre-harvest marketing, and if you got hedges on, you can roll those out and capture that carry out there, but you've gotta be acutely aware of what it's costing you to just 
put it into the bin or put it into an elevator and look at that being un, unhedged or un, you know unprotected and what the cost of that's going to be and the cost of the actual cost of the farmers yep. carry they're giving you incentive in the market but you also have to look at that cost of interest what you're going to forego and it was a big deal last year and it's a big deal again this year you have to really look at that and consider that when you're from your marketing standpoint so there's some basis opportunities out there right now on the soybean side of it we're tighter than what we typically are at adm lincoln uh, we're not as tight as what we were maybe at last year going into harvest but from a historical perspective there's some good opportunities on beans right now just looking right off the combine well is it too early to start talking about the heat and dryness in brazil plus what are the chances that we'll actually see a farm bill passed this year we're going to talk about all of that but first we need to take a quick break and then we'll be back with more u.s farm report Woo!